Well, welcome everyone. Let's talk about urban planning. Have you ever felt like your voice isn't being heard when it comes to your city's development? Well, probably we all have. And this is because traditional smart city initiatives often miss the mark by not including uh, citizen input. So let's look today at Decidim, a citizen participation platform for urban spaces, which aims to address this problem, trying to resolve it. And I have invited Aline Sutter to explain to us how Decidim promotes uh, decentralization, collaboration, all this to empower citizens in decision-making and social changes in the cities. Aline, welcome to our episode. Thank you for the invitation. So as I mentioned, Decidim was uh, created as a tool to, attract, to address the lack of citizen-centered practices in smart cities. And there is here, I guess, uh, a potential to reclaim urban technology for collective benefit. So that's what prompted your research. Um, yes, actually, um, in our case, we were really interested in how um, the Decidim platform um, is applied in, in Swiss cities. Uh, so that's where our research was focused on. Um, and for those who are not familiar with the platform, um, Decidim was elaborated um, by basically grassroots practices from civil society um, in Spain um, after the 15M movement. And it was really a platform to enhance um, civil society voices in democratic processes. So not, not particularly um, in, in urban planning, but overall in, in democratic processes. Um, and in our research, we were really interested in um, this question of how this Decidim platform, which really um, comes from the society, um, envisions kind of like a digital right um, to the city um, for everyone. So something that's often critiqued um, in smart city processes. Um, if that actually changes um, this critique, because very often, um, I mean, scholars are rightly so addressing aspects of um, that smart governance or smart cities are creating new forms um, of power and control uh, by state authorities, but also by technology companies. Um, and through this Decidim um, platform, um, it uh, approaches kind of like a new direction of working with open source platforms, working with a tool that was de developed um, by citizens. Um, so we're really interested in, in also this research gap of whether um, this tool actually resolves um, this relevant critique on smart cities and smart governance, um, or if these um, processes are ongoing. So let us know the most, the most important highlights or conclusions of your study. So in our study, we looked at three different case studies um, in two Swiss uh, German speaking cities. Um, and there the Decidim platform was used um, for participatory budgeting, um, but only as a pilot project. So both cities have actually implemented this platform very newly. Um, it was more kind of like an experimental um, setup. Um, and we were interested in this question of um, whether this platform actually served as a space to discuss and ne negotiate um, urban space um, and also local claims um, on urban space. Um, and it was quite interesting to see that actually um, we have seen sort of at least in very hyper local realities um, we have seen shifting power dynamics um, there was one um, case where a um, civil society organization um, actually um, organized a neighborhood festival through this platform um, and it was really used kind of like as a counter power and, and to claim um, urban space um, and they have also addressed um, underlying urban issues such as financialization of land, disadvantaged neighborhoods, housing for profit, so on the platform to foster public support. Um, and of course, I mean, something that's almost always the case with these platform, if they're implemented correctly, um, is that it enhances aspects of transparency, the organization of information, um, and um, a better collection of citizen proposals. Um, but we, what we have also seen is that um, the platform is, of, of course, still controlled and organized by city administrations. Um, 
and therefore kind of like this um, extent to which this platform enables um, a digital right to the city very much depends on those who are organizing um, these processes. So this was um, very interesting to see that it is actually less a question of which exact digital tool or platform to use um, and more so how these processes um, are implemented. Um, and we have also seen that sometimes um, governments see this platform as kind of like an automatic enabler um, of collaborative city making um, without really adjusting uh, dominant distribution of power and agency. Um, and this is one key takeaway um, for us that, of course, this shift um, is necessary um, to actually widen um, the voices um, of the citizens in these processes. Mm -hmm. You mentioned then discussing of well, several topics as budgeting and well, more dis transparent discussions, power shifting, but well, depends still on who organizes the process. I'm curious to know more about well, potentially policy implications or for individuals, city planners. Um yeah, I think we, we actually addressed um, a couple of um, quite real life situations that can be integrated um, mm -hmm. to policy making um, when um, one integrates such a platform. Um, so the first aspect is that um, there needs to be a local need for a new digital democratic instrument. Um, if that's not pre-given, um, it is extremely difficult um, to integrate a new very formal um, instrument um, so that means that there needs to be some sort of accessibility to the tool, um, also familiar familiarity with the tool. Um, and what we have seen in one case is what's really beneficial um, if such a tool is implemented by a locally rooted actor. Um, so, for example, a neighborhood association. Um, so that we also have sort of this link to the physical space, to the neighborhood, um, to a sort of small scale networking in real life um, that can be then um, transformed or transferred um, to this digital tool. Um, another aspect um, that we have observed is that um, governments uh, or government employees, so those who actually integrate and organize these processes um, need to implement the scope of action, so which allows organized civil society and grassroots initiatives um, to appropriate digital infrastructure for their own purposes. Um, so this is something crucial uh, to actually um, enable this digital right to the city. And then the third point um, is also that uh, local practices of hybrid communication and organizing need to be aligned um, with the structure of the platform. So there was one kind of like counter example uh, in our case study where um, a neighborhood uh, community actually then started talking on kind of like an everyday messenger app instead of uh, on the Decidim platform. Um, that just shows that uh, the tool was not part of their um, everyday digital tools. Um, which is extremely crucial um, if governments are interested um, in it, that people really use it uh, kind of like on a daily basis. The studies focus on Swiss, Switzerland, and if I'm not mistaken, in on early stages of uh, density implementation, and you indicate this in the study has been a research limitation. So what should future research address to follow up on this study? Exactly. As you already mentioned, um, all three cases that we've looked at, they were all pilot processes. Um, and both cities that we've looked at have now actually integrated the Decidim platform um, on their overall city level structure um, in the meantime. So they've started um, experimenting with this in 2019. Um, and both cities have started to integrate the platform in 2021. So um, experiences with the platform are very novel still, both for the governments, but then also for researching um, these processes. Um, so it will definitely be necessary to look at, to do similar explorations that we already did um, when these uh, digital participatory governance practices have become more established in Switzerland, but then also in, in other European cities. Um, and I mean, 
Switzerland is definitely not kind of like at the forefront um, of these processes, um, working with um, digital tools in um, in urban governance. Um, but I think it's an interesting case study, um, also thinking about the democratic processes that we have um, in Switzerland um, and thinking from this angle, I think, um, could also enhance research um, on this city and the platform itself, but then also on the question of how do we actually um, discuss questions of claims to urban space, how we use urban space, um, how citizens can be part of urban planning processes um, in our future cities. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Because both here and in the article, you are very adamant about guaranteeing the right to the city even though an important step was made here, uh, this right to the city is still to be claimed. Uh, so can you elaborate on that and also share with us your own personal reflections of this study? Like what struck you the most? Exactly. So this um, question of how do we actually implement the digital right to the city was, of course, also from kind of like a theoretical standpoint. Um, this was our kind of like analytical method of really study these case studies and think about um, how we could actually enhance the use um, of such platforms um, in, in urban governance processes. Um, and I think what was really interesting to me in our study was actually the vast differences between these case studies um, in how they envision um, a ride to the city, even though they all use the same tool and the same process. Um, so we have seen everything from a grassroots appropriation of the platform up until to a very formalized process where, as I already mentioned before, the community then started talking to each other on an everyday messenger app. Um, so kind of like this vast variety um, of cases um, within kind of like the same tool, the same application um, was also surprising, um, but quite an interesting standpoint, um, I think, to do further research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If as challenging as it might be, if you could sum up this conversation in one or two sentences, or even perfect in a PowerPoint slide uh, presentation title, what would it be? I think digital platforms such as um, DCDIM cannot um, resolve entrenched inequalities in today's cities. So thinking about questions of financialization of land, disadvantaged neighborhood, also the absence of voting rights uh, for certain communities. Um, and this also means that tackling these urban inequalities only through smart city strategies is not enough. Um, we need hybrid participation strategies as well as political means um, and a platform alone, even if it's a, a platform such as Decidim, which um, envisions uh, this right to the city, um, we need to shift uh, pre-existing power dynamics in urban planning. Okay. Great closing. Aline, thank you very much. Thank you. For those who are uh, watching on us on YouTube, uh, in the description of the video, you can find all the resources, all the materials that I've been talking uh, with Alin throughout this episode. And you can also listen to us in all uh, podcast platforms, subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Twitter.